so good with every breath that I am able. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire and darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God.
You may be seated. Family and friends, we are gathered here today in the sight of God to witness the union of Johnny Olguin and Eve Hale in Christian marriage. Marriage is a holy covenant where a man and a woman are united as a couple and are challenged as growing believers to be conformed into the image of Jesus. This is a joyous event to be celebrated and remembered for years to come. But it is also an event to be contemplated and honored with deep reverence for the lifetime commitment these two are making. It is with great love for each other and for God that Johnny and Eve come together seeking to be united as one. In God's amazing act of creation, he created people in his own image. We read of this astonishing event in the first chapter of Genesis when it says, So God created man in his own image, and the image of God he created them, male and female. In marriage, God gave his creation the ability and the command to create life like themselves, to create life in the image of God by beginning a family. It is into this holy covenant that Johnny and Eve have chosen to enter. Not knowing any reason that these two should not be married, I ask, who gives this woman to be married to this man? Johnny, Eve, please join me as we prepare to enter into the covenant. Let's pray together. Father, we are so grateful for this moment right here, right now. That you've been preparing in their lives, each other. You've been using the friends and the family in this room to help them be the best spouses for one another. So, Father, we just pray over this ceremony. We pray that you are glorified, that you are honored. Father, we pray that this is something that is a, a, a distinct memory in their life. So we love you and we praise all in your name. Amen. Over the last few months, we have talked about how God would have both of you serve him through beginning a new family. You know that there will be challenges that await you as you begin a new family. There will be trials that will come as God refines your character and uses your marriage as a visible picture of his son, Jesus Christ, and his love for the church. Allow me to share with many of you what, what many of you have already witnessed. Johnny and Eve have beautifully exemplified the love of Jesus for his church through the love for each other. To truly know them is to understand the depth of their passionate devotion to one another. Before the first marriage ever recorded, God had made Adam the first person ever created in his image. God took Adam, placed him in the Garden of Eden, the first sanctuary in the earth, and God charged Adam in Genesis 2.15... And God charged and worship, to worship and obey him. And this was mankind's first charge, to worship and obey God. Then, when God gave Adam his wife Eve, they were to continue in worship and obey God in the garden. But they were also commanded to multiply and fill the earth with worshipers of God. In the time of Adam and Eve's innocence, God instituted marriage between the first man and the first woman. That helped to set the plan and the pattern for marriage. To leave parents, to enter into a covenant relationship with God and each other, becoming one and worshiping him. My first memory I have of meeting Johnny was the day that we played disc golf together. I remember that I had just one, I had had a bag full of disc golfs, just ready for any circumstance. Johnny had just one putter. Two things are etched in my brain from that experience. First, I remember that he had a better score than me. That's a fact that will still linger with me to this day. The second thing is, I remember Johnny sharing stories about his long-distance girlfriend. And starting college while maintaining a long-distance relationship is an endeavor undertaken (laughs) by a few. Yet it was evident even then that Johnny and Eve were deeply committed to each other. Since that time, I've witnessed Johnny's growth as an individual, a devoted Christian, and a man of God. He has shown that he will unconditionally love, care for, and protect Eve. A couple years later, I met Eve in person for the first time. While many of us in Gainesville had heard of her, we soon discovered that she had also learned a great deal about us. Eve possessed a remarkable awareness of the intricacies of people's lives, even those she had never met. It has become evident to me that this quality is one of Eve's greatest strengths. 
Her genuine love for people compels her to seek understanding and connection. She embodies a curiosity and compassion for others that beautifully mirrors God's own attitude towards us. They are a wonderful couple. They are great for one another. Most importantly, they have already shown a relationship that has Jesus as the foundation. You are now committing to spend your lives together. You already know marriage isn't always easy. You need to be centered correctly. Happiness will come, but joy is promised to you by finding it in God. We've talked about how it's no mistake that God has brought you two together. God has known about this day and the family and the friends and the circumstances that have brought you here to this point, even before he planned the foundation of the earth. How each of your paths, your families, and your friends and your experiences have helped to shape you and prepare you. God has brought you together to accomplish great things for his kingdom and to experience great things in your lives. Allow me to briefly draw from two biblical texts and challenge and inspire you, if I could. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 10 says this. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up the other. But woe to the one who is alone and falls and does not have help. Life together will be sweet, but it will also have its seasons of difficulty. This passage beautifully illustrates that two individuals are stronger together. You are no longer facing challenges alone, but have the joy of navigating life as a team. Embrace the wonderful challenge of serving one another, even in times when others may, the other may not deserve it. The other text is Matthew 19, 4 through 6. And it captures Jesus' words on marriage when he says, Have you not read that the one who made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined in, to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together... Let no one separate. Marriage is a commitment to one another. God has designed marriage to reflect to the world a visible reality of Jesus' commitment with his church. Your commitment to one another is a shadow of the greater commitment God has to his people. Let your marriage serve as an example that helps others understand God's love for them. May your marriage demonstrate patience, faithfulness, and delight in one another. Keeping this in mind, I have a challenge for both of you. Johnny, I challenge you to cherish, love, and serve Eve just as Jesus served. This is a difficult mandate that you as a husband must fight to do. Don't expect it to always happen naturally. You have committed to, let, to her. Let your decision guide you, not any specific moment. Give of yourself to Eve. Give of yourself to Eve in a way that consistently and intentionally puts her good above your own. Do not ever let anything hinder your value of her. Know that she will continue to be the one that God has uniquely picked and blessed you with. And to even question that would be, at the very least, to question the character of God. I want you to remember this verse. Mark 10, 45, which says, For the Son of Man, that being Jesus, did not come to be served, but to serve, and to lay down his life for the ransom for many. Then find Eve, ask her about her day, and ask her how you can serve her Cherish, love, and serve her like Jesus loved his church. Eve. As Johnny seeks to cherish, love, and serve as Christ loved his church, my challenge to you is to show him grace. Grace is God's unmerited favor towards God and his creation. All of us have rebelled against God, yet Jesus suffered and died for sinful people like us. And God's grace was ultimately displayed in 2 Corinthians 5 when it says, God made Jesus, who did not know sin, to become sin for us. So we might become the righteousness of God in Jesus. And a marriage that works itself out by understanding the grace and love that Jesus has shown us, and then seeking to share that with our spouse, even in times where we may feel and often know they don't deserve it. Johnny and Eve, allow God to use your family to encourage and serve not only each other, but also, also those who do not know Jesus and could care less about his church. Allow them to see your marriage as the picture of Jesus and his church and the love that God has for his people. With all this being said, I ask that you prepare, which is being here right now, uh, to make vows to one another. Johnny, we're going to start with you. If you agree with this, you get to say I do, which I think we're expecting that to happen. Johnny, do you take Eve to be your wedded wife 
to live together after God's ordinances in holy matrimony? Do you promise to honor, love, and comfort her in sickness and in health, in poverty and in wealth, and in hardship and in blessing? Will you forsake all others and be faithful to her as long as you both shall live? Eve, do you take Johnny to be your wedded husband, to live together after God's ordinances and holy matrimony? Do you promise to honor, love, and comfort him in sickness and in health, in poverty and in wealth and in hardship and in blessing? And will you forsake all others and be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? You will now seal your vows to honor, love, and comfort by the giving and receiving of, of rings. These unbroken circles symbolize the union that, of your marriage and that cannot be broken by another. The rings have no beginning or end, which mirrors the love that God has for his children. As you both strive to model that kind of love in your marriage, may your lives bring honor to the one who created you to glorify him. As you wear these rings, may they always remind you of your love for each other and the commitment you have made to each other and the commitment you have made to God. Johnny, we'll start with you. Johnny, place this ring on each finger and repeat after me. We'll break this up into tiny sentences. I, Johnny, take you, Eve, I, Johnny, take you, Eve to be my wedded wife, to, my wedded wife, to, have, and to, hold, to have and to hold from this day forward. From this day forward. I, pledge before God and these I pledge before God and these witnesses to place your good above mine, to place your good above mine now and always, now and always no, matter the circumstance, no matter the circumstance. I promise to love you, I promise to love you honor you, and comfort, you and comfort you until death does us part. Until death does us part. Joyfully and willingly, I commit myself. Joyfully and willingly, I commit myself to you and you alone. To you and you alone. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Eve, place this ring on Johnny's finger, and repeat after me. I, Eve, take you, Johnny. To be my wedded husband, to have and to hold, from this day forward, I pledge before God and these witnesses to place your good above mine, now and always, no matter the circumstance, I promise to love you, honor you, and comfort you until death does us part. Joyfully and willingly, I commit myself. To you and you, alone. to you and you alone. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Johnny and Eve have chosen to use a unity candle to, to symbolize their lives today. What we're about to see is we're going to see the two outer candles represent the individual lives of the bride and the groom, each lit to symbolize their journey thus far. These candles stand as a reminder of their distinct backgrounds, experiences, and families. The center candle represents their new life together as a married couple. After lighting the candle, they will have a time to pray together. For all of you here, here here's what I would ask. While this is happening, I ask that all, all of us join together in praying for them from your seat. Pray that God will bless and use their marriage for his kingdom.
pray with, pray with me one more time. Father, we are so thankful for this moment. We're so thankful for what we're seeing before us, their commitment to you, and the reflection of its commitment that you've already made to us. Father, you loved us when we were your enemies. You love us when we don't deserve it. And Father, we pray that over them, that they show grace to one another, that as people in their life see them, they see you more clearly. We know, the plan, we know that you have plans for them, plans to use them for your glory. And Father, we're just joining you and celebrating that right here, right now. We love you, and we pray this all in your name. Amen. Johnny and Eve, we have witnessed the pledging of your love and commitment to each other. We have seen the sealing of your vows by giving and receiving of the rings. We've seen you light a candle to represent that as well. By the power vested in me before God and these witnesses, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Johnny, you may kiss your bride. Ladies and gentlemen, I now present to you Mr. and Mrs. Johnny Olguin. Olgeans would like to take a moment and thank you all for joining them today in this moment. Uh, a couple logistics for the reception. Uh, the, the reception will be at the Yacht Club. Uh, and here's what I've been told to tell you. Uh, we will be parking at Elliott Point Elementary. 
Uh, so you, there'll be a shuttle from the elementary school to the yacht house and from there back for parking. Uh, and when you get there, you might wonder, where should I sit? And it's open seating, so it's kind of a choose your own adventure. So they're so excited to see you all there. Let's go.